I just want to make it fit today. Okay, so we're going to go and draw the candle today. First thing we're going to do is draw this candlestick. And I'm going to use the pencil for the most part. And I'm just going to cruise through this. And I can't do it there because I'm not on a layer. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and click and drag on this candle silhouette. And you'll see in a moment, I'm just drawing through, getting my candle roughly indicated. You can use the pen tool, you can use the candle, it doesn't matter. Look for the circle to close your shape. All these anchor points are a result of me going here and setting up my fidelity on my pencil tool so that it gets exactly what I'm looking for, a lot of texture. Moving it all the way over to the right, it's going to allow me to go and draw, and when I have to go and re-establish where I'm positioning my hand, as long as I'm within 20 pixels, it'll reconnect. Now the only thing is, is that I'm not one for a lot of information, so I like to go to the pencil, go down to the smooth tool, and I like to eradicate by clicking and dragging over this and simplifying the shapes so it doesn't take up more memory to redraw this thing. It's not really contributing to anything, so clean it up a little bit. Okay, once I've got that, letter I and then I'll eye drop of the darkest dark. Move it over here. It doesn't really matter what color this is because it's about to go away. Next step, I'm going to go and create a rectangle here and then go to the gradient mesh tool. But before I do that, I really do want it to be the darkest dark here. Letter I for eyedropper. Object, create gradient mesh. Three and three is a good spot to start. And if you notice, it's three rows, three columns, or three columns and three rows, flat and highlight of 100%. Meaning, if I click here, it's going to give me exactly the color I'm looking for. It's not going to go and give me a tint or a shade. Hit OK to this. Since I did this last, it's going to be in front of the wick, or the candlestick, I mean. So I need this to be in front to do the next step, which is to do a, um, a clipping mask. And a clipping mask is when you get phooey. a clipping mask is going to be when you have a shape on top and you want to put something inside of the shape. It can be a photo inside of a star. It can be this gradient mesh inside of this gradient or this candlestick. So with my black selection tool, I marquee over all of them, and the quick key would be Control or Command Seven, or if you don't know the quick key, you can go to Clipping Mask under Object and make it. Okay, so the golden color that was on top disappears because this is taken over. Now if I click inside, you can see I've got this mesh information. And these areas here are called fields. If I click in the middle of a field, all four anchor points are selected. And what that does is it's going to pour whatever ch color I choose over here into this box. And it's going to extend as far as the handles will take it from these four anchor points here, here, and here. Letter A and you can click, you can see there's three anchor points on these, there'll be four anchor points on these. I'm going to change the color on this so we can see more readily what's going on. Green. Okay, so again, four handles. That means I can go and twist these, I can pull them, and what's good about this gradient mesh is that you can get gradients of color that are going to repl replicate something that would happen in nature. So this looks like you know, maybe this is an old hot candle that somebody grabbed and squeezed it a little bit so you get imperfections in the gradient. Okay, more realistic. That's one thing. So what I'm going to do to go and fulfill the rest of this drawing is I'm going to get my pencil tool, quick key letter N, and I'm going to go and I'm going to draw these kind of shadowy shapes. Just quickly get these in here. and it's going to be all in one big shape. And for the precision aspect, I'm going to go and convert to my pen tool, hover over the base, look for the slash mark, click and drag, or not even. I just click there, click over here, and then look for the circle to close the shape, and it's closed. Eyedropper, the shadow from the photo resource. Okay, move this into position over here. And I'm going to sample the darkest dark. Checking my colors. RGB mode. Click up here to convert it to CMYK mode for printing purposes. 
And I want it to be more brownish, so I'm going to grab this, and that'll be the color I go with. Gradient is right here. I'm going to grab this dark brown and drag the black straight off and get rid of it. Um, I can't delete this right now. I'm going to need two of this brown, so I'm going to click and hold it, Alt or Option key, drag a copy, and then I can just grab the white and get rid of it. So there's no gradient when you've got the same color, right? But I want to get this, and I'm going to make this down to, say, 20. Return. So now this, not this one. Which one is 20? That was weird. OK, so I'm going to click on that, and I'll get down to 20. And then I'm going to delete this one. I don't know where that came from. OK, so if you can see, it's going from 100% color to the same color, but transparent. And this is my gradient tool over here. And I can do something like this. Oops, Control Z, or Command Z. Click on this, gradient tool. And you can see what happened. It's starting to get there. This in here, letter I, I want it to be more of a golden color, orange. Sample. Okay, that's looking pretty good to me. The other thing I can do with this is I can go and knock down the uh, edge with the use of an opacity modification as well as effect, blur, and then go to the Gaussian blur. Check to make sure that your settings are right because you want to be at 300, transparent, and you want anti-alias selected for this particular key. And I'm going to stay in RGB for this and sit OK. So it's set up now. Then I'm going to go and blur the edge. Same spot. Effect, blur, Gaussian blur, and preview this. And you can see that it feathers or softens the edge. And so at this point, I might want to get a little bit more opacity back. And you can see that it's a very subtle scenario here that's kind of echoing what's going on over here. So the next thing is, and the last thing I'm really going to cover that's new, is covering this gradient mesh tool. Because I want this color to s abruptly stop right here, if you can notice. And with that, I'll go up here and I'll grab this higher value. Click on this. Maybe I sample from within to keep it unified. And then I can drag this up and position it where I want it to be. OK, up here I want to add a little bit of information. And if I click this and I drop this shadow on here, that is going to go all the way down here, and I don't want that to happen. So gradient mesh, click it here. This is going to work as sort of a dam. So I go and grab with the letter I, eyedropper tool, and notice that this re rebuffs the advance of this color. But if I want, I can extend it with the handles. And twist these things to get them to, to behave the way you want them to behave. OK? And then lastly, you're just going to do what I did down here with that other shape, and that is to go and just draw these pieces. Draw these pieces, and make sure you close your shapes, letter I to eyedropper. Drag this into position over here. I don't know why I think I'm so funny when I say that. And you do that. Not that, just this. I want to sample from within here. I'm going to hit the option and, ooh, look at what I did there. That's not good. Shift click. That's what I want. Shift click. Uh, shift click down here. That's what I'm looking for. And so now I'm going to go and soften that again. Effect. So there's really only a couple of techniques we're using here. Just reiterating over and over again the same thing. Soften that up. A little transparency over here. See how that works for us? Eh, kind of. Could be better. So what you do maybe perhaps is you don't want that. You want this solid color. I don't want RGB. I want CMYK. Let's maybe sample directly from this. Maybe just dark shadow here. And then do the same thing. Transparency, Gaussian blur, etc. Okay. I don't want to add effects on top of effects. Last thing, window, appearance, 
gives me, if I've got something selected, this is the ingredients list for that. I look at this, I look down here and realize there's an opacity, there's a fill color uh, that's specific, and the Gaussian blur is here. So I'm going to double click here so I can find out what the measure is. It to tells me 5.5. Blur that more, hit OK, and see what happens. So that's soften that up. A little opacity uh, changing here, and that should be just what I'm looking for. Pretty close. And again, don't forget you can go and reconfigure the shape if you want to with your pencil tool. You just look at this and say, ah, this is a little bit less bulbous down here. As long as you start on the contour and end on the contour, it'll reconfigure for you. And see on this right here, this needs to come down. So white arrow, click through the, the gradient mesh, and drag this down. That's kind of getting what I need. And get this cross contouring happening. That's what's really nice about this is you get some cross contouring where this color is following this line across the surface of the shape. And that's about it. That's how you get the gradient mesh working to try to get life. And then just, again, continue to draw these highlight shapes and reiterate what we did here and here to get them to unite, not to look like stickers that are floating on top of the candle shape, okay? The next video I'm going to do will be to do the wick.